everybody. Welcome back to Nonprofit Productive. I'm Mike St. Pierre, your host, and we're going behind the scenes today with the developers of a brand new app that I think is really, really intriguing. And uh, I'm super excited to hear more about it. We have Joe and Parker from Two's App. And guys, I just want to say welcome to Nonprofit Productive. And uh, you have some of the, the catchiest, funnest marketing uh, that I've seen in a long time. So there you go. Um, but welcome to Nonprofit Productive. And uh, why don't you just start out by telling our, our viewers and our listeners, who are you and how did this app come to be? Oh, what an awesome, <laughs> what a great question. I'll, I'll let the, you know, I mean, he can give me all the credit he wants for the marketing, but I'll let the the man in the chair, you know, start off with how he came up with such an awesome tool. Yeah. So my name's Parker. Um, I studied computer science, so I'm the developer and um, yeah, I really started building it in college and for multiple reasons. Um, my freshman year, I was actually having, I had depression um, and my kind of mentor at school told me to write things down or actually to talk, to talk to people and like <laughs> kind of express yourself um, in order to feel better. And then I interned at Qualcomm, a big tech company in San Diego, my junior year. And my mentor there said, you need to be writing down the things that you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis, not only to track and remember them, but for years down the line, like what were you working on? What were you doing during your internship or your job? Um, so I basically took both of those pieces of advice and just wanted a better way to write things down and remember things, whether it was fun things that I was doing at college or more, you know, life like goals, um, things that I wanted to accomplish. And twos is the system that came out of that. Just a great pl place to write these things down. We call everything that you write down in twos things. Um, but I just continued to work on the application while I had a job at Google, a job at Qualcomm, a job at a startup where I met Joe. Um, but that was kind of the origin story of it. Yeah. And, and my story, you know, intersects Parker's really naturally in the fact that we did meet each other at a startup in Austin. And, you know, unbeknownst to me, I hadn't had a job before. It was my first job out of college. So just kind of getting the experience of working with such a dynamic company where they had combined real estate, which is really what I was there for, and technology was amazing because, you know, it gave me so much exposure to things that I had not even the least bit of knowledge about, including just what developers and what programmers do. And me just as a, you know, very curious person, I, you know, kind of started to blab my mouth until somebody would pay attention. And lucky for us, Parker was the one who decided to not immediately, you know, put on his headphones at full volume and say, all right, kid, get away from me. Um, so that was just the start of an amazing friendship. And very similar to Parker, my father, when I graduated, he told me about the art of writing things down and the value that it can bring to your life. And I think that as a society, we all have this association or this connotation of writing things down that is heavily um, influenced by, you know, reporting and essays and forms. And there's just kind of like a negative association. And we almost do it out of necessity, not out of desire. And so when my father had told me all of the benefits that it can add to your life, I started doing it immediately. And it was like night and day. So I was using notebooks at the time. I called Parker, you know, just as a friend and said, hey, I'm like, I'm getting more things done. I'm being promoted. And he was like, did anything change? And I was like, well, I'm writing things down. And he said, how curious I built an app for writing things down. And so that was the moment that we both just kind of started putting our heads together and tried to come up with whatever we could to improve the application. And so far, so great. Did you think of calling it like ones or threes? Like how did you settle on, on twos? Uh, yeah. So twos, the word was a originally an inside joke that I had with a former girlfriend. Um, and that's how we would celebrate things. When good things would happen, we'd put up a peace sign and go twos. Um, and it was just for fun. But the platform itself really uh, meshed well with that word. It was a two-sided platform. It was 
start by writing things down privately. And then some of those things that you write privately, you may want to share with other people to connect and, uh, you know, help other people learn from those things. So it was like this twos sided platform. The peace sign was like our Facebook like button or our Instagram heart. Um, so that was just a nice intersection. And we are not, <laughs> and we are not unfulfilled with the different puns and like ways that we've been able to play mm -hmm. with it now, calling ourselves the twos guys mm -hmm. and every day is Tuesday and mm -hmm. how you twos in. So just obviously, you know, that one syllable, somewhat catchy mm -hmm. um, name has stuck in a very good way. Yeah, you have definitely mined that well. Uh, and uh, but it's fun. It's fun. And you know, a lot of notes apps, reminding apps can feel a little formal, a little stodgy. And I think there's a playfulness to twos. Um, Parker, as you were developing the app behind the scenes, had you tried others? Like had you tried Bear, Evernote, or whatever? And what was it about those that maybe weren't quite landing for you? Yeah, definitely. I think Google Docs and Evernote were pro and Apple Notes, of course. Um, those were like the three technic tech uh, solutions. I mean, obviously notepads or sticky notes or whatever are always effective. Um, but for me, it was like this quick capture mixed with like quick organization of information. I know that I used Evernote in school or in college to take like class notes but I wasn't able to revisit the information or even find the information that I was taking um, very easily as well as like quickly. Um, so we built, I, I built this system of things where like each thing that you want to write down or you want to remember is this very mu movable, um, reorderable piece of information. And that made it so I could reorganize things like move something from today to tomorrow mm -hmm. or move something from today to a different list much more easier and more efficiently um, that made it extra special. It wasn't just another document application. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. yeah I, I, I think that's kind of unique uh, as I was puttering in the app earlier today, just this idea that when you, I mean, the touch targets for those who haven't tried it out, download it, it's free to use. It's really, really fun. And as somebody over 40, the touch targets are big and that's really nice because there's <laughs> a lot of apps that aren't, you know, I mean, I, I love things three from culture code, but for whatever reason, uh, they simply refuse to increase the font size. It's only been six years since this version has <laughs> been out, you know, um, I'm not a developer, Parker, so I'm sure it's much harder than one would think. Nonetheless, uh, you know, phones are bigger and eyes don't get better as we get older. So it's, I love the touch targets. It's a, it's a beautiful interface. I mean, really the UI is attractive. Uh, and I don't, I'm trying to think of like it, it, what does it remind me of? It's hard for me to, to actually say, you know what I mean? Um, because it is kind of unique. What do you think is unique about it? You know, what makes it, it's not as bloated as Evernote. Awesome. Uh, it's not as expensive as Evernote. Fantastic. Um, <laughs> it's uh, not this massive company, you know, where you feel like you're a number. And I, I actually, I do think that's a real attraction for a lot of users of twos is you can kind of feel like you're part of a community and you guys do these webinars. And I think that's attractive for a lot of people because they don't want to be anonymous. They don't want to be a number, but what would you both say is kind of unique about the app? For me, it's all about getting use out of the things that you write down. So I think that the very common sentiment with other note taking applications is that that's what they are. They are a place for you to type text on a screen. And obviously that has a very, very big place in the world for us. You know, whenever there's a coupon code that comes through my email or a favorite quote that I see on Twitter, I need that place to quickly capture that information. But then there's the matter of making it useful. Like nothing that you write down is going to actually make you feel better unless you utilize it in a way that is like naturally occurring. So for example, things that are somewhat incremental, but stars, the ability to put a star next to a specific thing because I want to remember it specifically. It could be a quote, it could be an idea, it could be a thought. 
But the beauty of that is that, you know, unlike with note apps, I'm not highlighting it, I'm not underlining it. And then I need to go back to that page in order to see that underlined piece of information. It's, it's in a separate view called stars. And I know that that sounds so, you know, commonsensical. It's like flagging an email. Like, I mean, we all flag emails, Mm -hmm. but the beauty of it is that nobody has broken down information into these incremental pieces that allow you to make use of it. Setting a reminder on things, making it a to-do, essentially us creating as many touch points within the application such that your information serves you. Anything you want to add to that, Parker? Yeah, I mean, I, it is just, it's right in line with that. It's just kind of this all-in-one aspect of the application. You know, you're not having to use separate solutions for your notes, for your tasks, for your reminders, for your calendar. We're really trying to build this like all-in-one yet simple application where, you know, you, you're not having to learn how to do everything. You're just writing things down. And those, and from there, that's where you can make it into a to do, set a reminder on it. Um, but we're just trying to make this like very powerful all in one solution that, you know, people love because it is still simple uh, and easy to use. Simple is important. I have a question. So, uh, you know, I, I, I trigger that big plus button and up comes list reminder to do or thing. And initially I was, I was like fighting it. I'm like, I don't want to have to think too hard about this. You know, I want to like, something comes to mind, boom, hit the button. And I'm curious about the thing, you know, so what are some uses for that? I mean, the others I think are pretty clear list reminder to do, et cetera, but what are some examples of thing? So I'll take, I'll take the first stab at this and I'll let Parker, I'm sure he has a much more, you know, applicable answer. Mine is, you know, kind of a high level. Um, If I were to ask you, Mike, how many notes do you have going on in your life right now? Oof. So many. (laughs) I mean, yeah. But, but from a, but from like a very just, you know, um, colloquial sentiment, like, as a matter of fact, this will be a great connection. Twos used to be called twos, notes and lists, Mm. right? So every piece of information that we now call things, ostensibly were called notes. But the key that we're like really, obviously this is like, you know, relatively one of our biggest battles is that you have to retrain people to understand what a word means. Mm -hmm. And for us, that was things. It's not a matter of how many notes I have going on in my life. It's not a matter of how many memories or thoughts These are all, they all share one thing in common and that they're things. So exactly, you know, again, to connect it back to what Parker was emphasizing, um, when you tap that plus button, by starting a new thing, you may not know what it is yet. You may not have any concept, whether it's a to-do, something you want to be reminded of or whatever it may be, but that is essentially our rewording of the note. Instead of having notes, we have things because then you can turn your things into to do's or whatever it may be. But feel free to give me some feedback if that felt like it, you know, was riding a roller coaster. (laughs) Pardon me. No, that's helpful. Yeah. I mean, it's helpful. And honestly, once people putter around in the app for 45 seconds, I think they figure it out. Yeah. And, and, Parker, any addition to the usage of things in particular, or like, I guess, specifically from the fab? Yeah, the, the, the things are just anything that you would want to write down, anything you want to remember. It can be, you know, Catholic University, mm-hmm. um, just because that's something about you that I want to remember. Maybe I move it to my mic list, mm-hmm. um, but it's really that just ability to capture anything. It can be a task. It can be a random thought that you have. It can be something that you wake up in the middle of the night and need to write down. These are all just things that you want to remember. It could be a grocery item. And so one thing I will give you credit where credit is due, ostensibly that button existing within the fab is just our reinforcement of the fact that when you have something to write down, you just kind of have a quick place to jot it. Mm -hmm. Um, There are plenty of other ways like tapping on the screen, you're creating things, you know, by pulling down on today, you're creating things. But obviously the 
when building an ecosystem of writing things down, we want to try and make sure that there's enough different ways of accomplishing that goal. Oh yeah. It's super accessible, which is nice. Uh, let's talk about, is this a compliment to, you know, a, a robust, uh, to-do list app like to do list or Nosby or OmniFocus or the, like, is this a, a satellite to that? Is it a compliment? Is this the day pack that you take out? And those are the, you know, the five day hike backpacks. Like, <laughs> how, how do you see those potentially as maybe they're in conflict? Maybe they complement one another. Yeah. I think it really depends on the person in a lot of ways. Like we've heard a lot of people transitioning from Todoist into twos just because it suits them better for whatever they're trying to do. Mm -hmm. If they're just managing, you know, life related tasks and things, maybe they don't need a full on project manager. Um, so it really just depends on like the person in a lot of ways. Uh, some people will use it more for like quick capture of those. Like maybe they don't need to figure out where they're going to put something um, in some of those more like powerful tools. They just need to write it down and mm -hmm. then they, can, you know, review those things and add it to their more uh, sophisticated platform later. Um, but yeah, I, I would say it's either a compliment or a full replace. Like it, <laughs> okay. it's yeah. really depending on you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've never, uh, I've never fallen in love with drafts. Uh, I mean, I use drafts occasionally, but it seems like people like absolutely love drafts and I've always just been like, it's fine. You know? Um, whereas I think like you're saying, maybe twos is a great way to do that quick capture and maybe every three days, you know, you're clearing through or you're sending it somewhere else, or you're just getting it done there. Exactly. Exactly. Well, we, I think one of the most common things that we hear is that the mobile functionality is so, you know, mm -hmm. kind of um, head and shoulders above what's currently available that people will use it as their quick capture tool. Mm -hmm. And obviously, you know, when you're, this is, I actually think uh, something that we're always looking to improve upon when you're sitting at your desk and at your computer, the options of where to write something down are pretty vast. Mm -hmm. You know, as you mentioned, you, you, you brought up three, you know, without even taking a breath in between them. And then there's notion, Google docs, emailing yourself, texting yourself. There's hundreds of different options when it comes to being stationary, but as it relates to just being on the go, as we all are so much more frequently, having that quick capture on the phone is so much more important. And then you capture that idea that you had while you were walking to then come back and write that longer blog. We would argue that obviously, you know, twos is just equally as good of a place to write your blogs down as it is to capture the ideas for your blogs. But some people still prefer, you know, more highly customized options like a craft or something more robust like a medium, for example. So. Mm -hmm. For sure. Talk to us about the shareability of these lists. Cause that I, I was again, kind of a skeptic. I'm like, why would I want to share a list? And then you look on Twitter and you say, oh, that's a really interesting list that somebody just shared. Uh, so tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. I mean, that's like one of our core values in a lot of ways is being able to share things with other people and like connect with other people. So, I mean, the, I think a lot of platforms will like highlight it as like a published feature or just a way to uh, make your information more, more like publicly available. Um, we just kind of bake that into the platform where you can easily take a once private list and make it publicly available or share it with, um, you know, your family members or whoever collaborate with them on it. Um, it's just like a, you know, a lot of people will send an email and once the email is out, you know, you can't edit it. You can't change things about it. Uh, twos is a very easy way to like share information, but it's still live. You can still update it whenever you want. Um, so it's not like a, oh, I didn't, I forgot to do whatever. I put in the wrong address and, you know, mm -hmm. now I got to send another email to this chain and say, oh, sorry, just mm -hmm. kidding. It's not here. It's there. Mm -hmm. So I have uh, an example, and then I also want to, you know, um, tag along with Parker here as it relates to the main difference between, you know, how other apps use publishing versus what Twos does. Mm -hmm. It's really cool to me. The 
an analogy or an example of some sorts is like, if you were to use Google Docs prior, you know, if you use Google Docs to capture information that you want to be able to remember, it's obviously not a very sophisticated system. You know, it gets somewhat disorganized, but let's just for, you know, for fun, let's assume mm -hmm. that people are writing their recipes, their essays, their, you know, mm -hmm. family addresses, all of these things in Google Docs. The key difference is that you can share a link to that Google Doc individually with a couple of people. But now with twos, we actually are creating a feed where, you know, the best lists are being pushed up to the top of the feed ostensibly such that that recipe now isn't just a one to one exchange. It's a one to many. Because, you know, when Parker posts a list of his grandma's favorite uh, of his grandma's pumpkin pie recipe, me as someone who loves pumpkin pie is going to, you know, absorb it and want to utilize it as soon as I possibly can. I mean, here's a simple case scenario. We There's so many streaming services now, and I don't know about you guys, but probably what, in the last couple of years, you know, I have a watch list and uh, I'm... These are the three things on Prime and these are the three things on Max and HBO, whatever. And because I really don't want to, when I sit down on a Friday night, have to scroll through like five streaming services. So you just exactly. pull up the list. It's so easy. But like you're exactly. saying, that would be really interesting, you know, to either share with a small group or the whole world mm -hmm. uh, and, and hear what they're sharing as well. And there's, there's very surface levels examples, such as the one that you just brought up or the one that I brought up with related to recipes. One of my, my favorite examples as a recent, not to put a damper on the conversation, but one of my close friends passed uh, tragically recently. Mm -hmm. And so I made a list of different, um, you know, ways of coping with grief. And so, you know, it's a very specific instance mm -hmm. that obviously incited me to be like, okay, this is something that I'm going to end up experiencing again. There's these phases, there's these, mm -hmm. you know, coping mechanisms, there's these things that I want to remember for the next time this occurs. So I don't feel so barren, I guess, for lack of a better term, yep. but I chose to publish that information because everybody goes through grief. It's just a resource that now can be searched on the social side, mm -hmm. such that when everybody, whenever somebody feels like they're in that place, that they can actually find a resource that is utilizable. Like, so the difference between Google or, you know, long-term, when it comes to Google, you can search how to cope with grief. You're going to read that article, but then that article is going to go away. With twos, it, you know, lives on. Beautiful example. And I think it's, you know, something we talk about at Nonprofit Productive is our tools are very much interwoven into who we are as people. Um, our mm -hmm. phones are like appendages to us. They're just like way woven into the fabric of what we do every day. And so I think that's a, a fantastic example. Are there typical users? Are you just seeing like a full smattering <laughs> of folks all over planet earth who are being drawn to twos? <laughs> Not deserve. <laughs> <laughs> there, there are definitely pockets of users and uh, things, but I, I would say that you know that everybody uses it in kind of their own way and for what they need. Um, you brought up like teachers and um, people like that. Originally, that we definitely have a lot of teachers that are using it. I don't know if they use it as much like in the classes, but more just to keep track of all of the stuff that teachers mm -hmm. are having to keep track of. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, we have like lawyers are a big one. Real estate agents are a big one. Mm -hmm. um, moms. Students, moms. Mm -hmm. um, but the common denominator, which is relatively recent that we found is that it's people who are comfortable with writing things down, which again, novel concept, like, you know, mm -hmm. The fact that my father had to tell me like, hey, son, you, you know, I'm not going to suggest Adderall or, you know, I'm not going to suggest and like working out necessarily. He said writing things down. Mm -hmm. And so that takes a push. It takes like a suggestion such that nobody had told it to me before. And so people who are used to writing things down, whether it be moms on the backs of envelopes when they have a grocery list, professors, obviously, when they're making their lesson plans in Google Docs, we've come to find that people who 
are writing things down relatively frequently. And then also people who look to better themselves. So people who are willing to write things down as a methodology of becoming more productive, organizing their life, clearing their head. Those are the people that, you know, find it most applicable. Being more like thoughtful in your relationships. Mm -hmm. All of these things are... Yeah, uh, can be benefited from writing more things down. Writing things down. We have too. <laughs> we have too much to remember. It's a lot of burden to put on our brains. So we do. Uh, no, you're you're absolutely right. I mean, the CDC just came out with a statement about uh, teenagers and kids and social media. You know, and for all mm-hmm. kinds of different reasons. But I think one of them is that it it can turn your brain to mush, and to the point where you don't have intentionality and you don't have a clear mind. And so writing it down or using an app like Two's. I think even kids and teenagers would be, you know, really smart to use it. Um, All right, guys, here's a really tough question, which I didn't put in the show notes, but can you give us a sense of the roadmap? Like, what does the future look like for twos? And uh, I know that, you know, you have some interesting gamification kind of pieces built into this and, uh, but what is the roadmap look like for you guys? Do you mind if I take the first stab and then you can get technical with it, please? The thing that I love about what you just emphasized about the gamification, and again, as founders, trust me, all of this is going to sound super polished, but like it literally may be a conversation we had 10 seconds before we hopped on the call. Uh It's, it's It's truly our number one goal is to create an ecosystem where writing, remembering, and sharing information is the most naturally occurring benefits. So whenever something can directly improve those you know elements of the platform it'll be something that we heavily consider putting in to it so you know obviously like i said i'll kick it over to parker for like a more technical feature based answer but writing remembering and sharing is what we are you know most obsessed with and um the really exciting part is that we seem to be on the right track with that. And that's really what's going to be, that's what's going to guide all of our product development in the, in the immediate future. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, The, I I would say that that's correct. Like the, all of those pieces together make twos what it is. Like if it were strictly just about writing, then you may forget some things. If, it, if we didn't have the sharing, then it's not as collaborable and like connecting with people. Um, so that's kind of, I mean, we say the best place to write, remember and share things. That's kind of what we're building. And we, that's what we think, you know, our phones are tools. The apps that we have on our phones are tools. We just want to provide the ultimate tool for the ultimate tool. Like our phones are ridiculous. Um, and you know, there are very specific features and functionality that we think will be very effective in that full platform. Um, But really it's, you know, just continuing to build this system that allows you to be efficient, to remember things, to connect with other people. And I'll, and I'll give, I'll give one specific example that we're pretty excited about, but I also just remembered the, you know, connection that I was going to make to the gamification We inserted that mainly because we want to make the process, the act of writing things down fun. Same reason that we add confetti when when you swipe to complete things, the same reason that we created the sharing side, we believe very deeply that it is something that has to be appreciated and has to be valued. And when you're talking about something as boring as writing things down, theoretically, you got to come up with different unique ways of making that exciting and fun and useful. And that's exactly you know what the intent or the thought behind the coin based onboarding was. Mm-hmm. Now, just as like a, you know, little bit of a peek down the road, chat GPT and AI is obviously a very hot topic in the streets right now. And I think that we've been somewhat intentionally avoiding it because we didn't want to feel we would we didn't want to be cheap you know we didn't want to just kind of throw it in there just for a buzzword and to mm-hmm. you know let people run wild with it but we do believe in its ability to help synthesize information from wherever you get it so whether it be taking meeting notes and then being able to have the summary you know quickly jammed down to the bottom of your list 
whether it be being able to type banana bread recipe and having that auto populated so that you can then, you know, share it later on. The beauty of the way that twos will make it function in particular is that since we have these things, since each individual piece of information is broken down, you can get rid of anything that isn't re- like actually valuable to you. Like, I don't need your little chat GPT, like, you know what, Joe, that's a great idea. I would love to give you a banana bread recipe. Would you like to tell me what kind of banana bread recipe you want? Mm -hmm. The beauty is that you can kind of just quickly select the things that are pertinent to what you're trying to accomplish. And that's how we see it, you know, uh, a beautiful marriage of the two. That makes great sense. I mean, a, a cool feature that you use once a year, you know, like on a, a new Samsung phone where it makes for great media, you know, on launch day, but no one ever uses it. To me, that seems like a bad use of developer resources. Exactly. Exactly. Well, guys, uh, thanks so much. This is exciting. I can't wait for even more people to uh, download twos, to try it out. Um, How can folks find out more about you both and about using the app? Uh, Well, we have newly acquired writethingsdown.com. So if you go to writethingsdown.com, it will redirect to twosapp.com <laughs> where you can use twos. Um, and that's available on web, iOS, Android, Chrome extension, desktop apps, all, all the fun stuff. Um, and as we alluded to in the beginning, we are painfully online. So, you know, as a B2C <laughs> application, we obviously are trying to turn everybody, you know, into being a twos user with every new TikTok that we make. Um, so we're online, you know, we're at twos Joe, we're at twos baller, we're at twos app. Um, I genuinely don't know what the best way to, you know, kind of sin- I mean, we can make a list. <laughs> um, we, we would be probably best, uh, to, I, I want to plug that our community, we have a great, uh, discord community That's where cool. a lot of people are conversing and sharing ideas and sharing bugs or whatever. Um, we call it happy Tuesday because every day is a great day to use this. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah. So if they're, if they're excited about the space, they want to be involved and talk with us. Happy Tuesday, discord community we and to chat. And just like what Parker said, the, the truth of the matter is that we are most excited about people utilizing the tool and understanding the benefits it can have on your life almost immediately so write things down.com, downloading twos on the app store. That is definitely the thing that we're most excited for people to experience. And then if they like what they see, if they like or don't like what they see, honestly, we we are mm-hmm. you know very open to positive yeah. and critical feedback. We would love to, you know, have them follow us on social media or join our community. Absolutely. Guys, thanks again. Really appreciate it. Awesome. Thank we, you, Mike. We appreciate you having us on. And happy Tuesday. <laughs>